Welcome. Today I will show you uh, several interesting, I guess, uh, features that you can find in the developer options. Now for this I will be using the Huawei Mate, or not Mate, the P50 Pro. Now I believe this basically functions the same way on almost every other Huawei device, though I don't know if that is completely correct. Um, so anyway, let's get started. We will first need to actually enable the developer options. Uh, which you do by going into the about phone section and selecting the build number tapping on it seven times and it will give you this pop-up when you go back go to system and update and then here you should see the developer options so we're going to begin with uh something that I first one that is that i won't be actually able to fully i guess show uh but for people that actually i don't know might want to disable certain features of the phone uh, might be fairly uh, useful so it would be the usb debugging now this is uh, strictly for well normally this is strictly for developers but uh, by enabling usb debugging you can use adb on your computer and disable a certain uh, stupidly annoying features of the phone if you ever for instance use the face unlock and you kind of cover up the camera it does this stupid thing as an example here i'm going to show it on my phone so there we go, uh, it's using camera. I cover it up, let's try it again. And uh, come on, there we go. It basically prevents you from being able to use a fingerprint sensor by giving you this atrocious uh, overlay right here that will not disappear unless you uncover the camera. Why it's there? I, there is a purpose why I have multiple ways of unlocking the device through pattern, through fingerprint and face recognition so I don't get locked into a specific one. This is absolutely stupid. And there is a way to actually disable it, uh, but like I mentioned, you do need to have USB debugging. Now, there's a couple different things that can disable you uh, by using the USB debugging. There is uh, this uh, thing where you use your knuckles to, to do certain things like a split screen. Personally, sometimes it uses my thumb as a, and it mistakes it for a knuckle, which is really annoying because I'm just trying to scroll down, scroll up or do something. And it does this stupid thing. You can also disable that if you really want to. Uh, there's no actual settings anywhere in the phone, so this is the only way you can actually get rid of it through USB debugging using ADB on your computer. Now moving on to the next one, uh, this is going to be for applications that uh, want to know your location and use that uh, location to give you content based on your region or limit it in some way. As an example, Netflix is uh, fairly known for doing that. Uh, so there is this option for Mac location apps where you just install some kind of um, Mac location app from I would say Play Store but we have the ga app gallery I think it's called here so you can download it from there and then I believe you set it up in here let me just quickly find it so uh, going back there is the USB debugging which you might want to enable so you just do this and when you plug it in it will work now let's go to the uh, the location mocking thingy thing if I can actually find it. I think I already passed it. Oh, there we go. So it's right over here. Now, I don't have any app installed, so as you can see, it tells me no app, and I cannot select any app. If you have some kind of Mac location app, I can choose it, and then it will you know, the developer options will basically use that to spoof your location. Uh, in certain cases, you might be able to choose what location that is, uh, or it might just randomize it. So it really depends, I guess, on that map. Uh, but still allows you to basically give some kind of app inaccurate, uh, basic, inaccurate location of where you are located. And uh, I know people, I believe, used to use this uh, quite prominently when uh, Pokemon Go was a thing. Uh, so you could just kind of set it up to that you're somewhere else and you could still be at home, kind of defeating the purpose of an app. But hey, um, still, uh, solutions are always nice. Uh, obviously, it can be used for any kind of app in the phone, as an example, if you want to and not allow uh, Zuckerberg to um, to get your location and tell them to zuck on these nuts, uh, that's a great way to do so. So yeah, anyway, uh, let's um, 
move on to the next one, which is the animation speed. Now this is probably going to be... Uh, basically anybody can utilize this. What it does is just changes the animations of certain uh, parts of the phone. So if we scroll down further, there we go. We have three different animations. We have the transition animation scale, animation duration scale, and um, oh, and window animation scale. So as an example, uh, the first one, the window animation scale, represents uh, this pop-up right here. So if I select it to be off, it just should literally instantly pop out. If I select it to be times 10, uh, well, we're wasting time now. So let's select it to be half speed. So this is now super fast and still gives you the animation. And because this is running 120 hertz, it still will look fairly good, but just way faster. Now we have several other ones like the transition animation scale and animation duration scale. Each one of them, like I mentioned, corresponds to different animations. So as an example, this is one, uh, this is one, and this is one, uh, where it kind of like zooms in, zooms down, swipes and stuff like that. You basically can change the speeds of the, all of those. And as an example, if we select them to be off, as you can see, now it's not animated anymore. I just completely like glitches out basically and it does everything instantly. So I would recommend to keep it at 0.5. It will greatly increase the speed of it, but uh, still actually give you animation. So it won't be like just looking as it did just a second ago. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is, uh, I guess, a combo of two, which you can pick whichever one you want. So if we scroll down, we'll find the uh, don't keep location and background process limit. So let's see if I can quickly find it. There we go. Don't keep activities. So what this allows you to do is basically once enabled, it just force quits any kind of app that you were running. So the app cannot literally run in the background. There's no apps that will be able to run in the background because they get automatically just terminated once you close them off. So with that enabled, if I close uh, settings, it will just completely shut it down. And instead of going back to, I believe, the developer options, it will automatically go to the main page. So let's see if I'm correct. Actually, I don't know why I did this. I literally just defeated the purpose of this. So let's try that again. So then I'm going to navigate here. We're in system and update. Close this and go in here. As you can see, we're back in the main settings page instead of being in here. So that's one thing. Let's find this quickly. There we go. Don't keep location. So that's one way you can do it. Um, obviously, this is probably going to be very useful for um, really intrusive apps like Facebook, which uh, literally gathers data on you even when you're not using the app by using your microphone, which you probably are aware based on the damn ads that you get uh, when you're talking to someone and, oh, I don't know, your interest is dog food. And well and behold, Facebook gives you dog food ads. Uh, by basically having this enabled, I don't think they can do this anymore because the app is just literally force quitting, being force quit. So bye-bye uh, uh, being able to just spy on you, hopefully, to be honest. I, I'm not exactly sure if this will work in a way. They don't have any kind of other way, but uh, hopefully it does work like that. And obviously it clears up the memory of the phone uh, by closing off all the apps and uh, should also consume a little bit less battery because of it. Now, this is the extreme version. What you can do, though, is select this one, background process limit. Now we have standard one, which I believe is just simply based on however many apps you can run in the background. That's however many will run. Uh, but we can have it set to just one at most, uh, two or three or four. So you can choose how many apps can run at the same time in the background without being just completely terminated and basically reset. Now, personally, I think something like a two apps in the background would be quite good. Anything above two will close them off, uh, the more than two. So that is an alternative to the first one. And additionally, actually thinking about uh, this option, I don't know how well this works if you're trying to, for instance, use something like, uh, like YouTube. There we go, so... Oh right, I don't have YouTube vents, so I can't really test it now. So that's a bummer. Uh, so yeah, you might want to look at that because if, if this is correct, if you have this option enabled, the 
the first one, the don't keep activities. When you close off something like a music player, it automatically gets fully shut down. So music should stop. Uh, so you might wanna, if you want to have that enabled, also make sure that you enable the other option to have like two apps or one app uh, always running in the background. And I believe there's also another way you can do this by, there we go, unlocking an app. So it should not close off. Let's see if that is the case. Nope, it still closes it off. So even locking it, it won't work. So yeah, if you plan to run apps in the background like music or YouTube, you might want to select the second option. So anyway, this would finish up uh, the list of different options that I found interesting and the developer options. And if you found this video helpful in any way, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.